this is supposed to be a demo, um, but because we had some scheduling issues, uh, it will more be more or less just be an announcement. And this is about another open source implementation for OSLC, and uh, this time for the Python programming language, and um, another one because um, or for Python there is nothing, and um, we as uh, a company set out with, with this technology contribution into the OSLC community. And um, <coughs> I'm myself, I'm Francis Hoffman, I'm working for Contact Software. We are a PLM vendor from Germany, mostly active in Europe and the German speaking market and in Asia. <coughs> And uh, I will tell you, I give you very quick, I go over the marketing blur. We have around 300 employees, 2,000 customer sites in more than 30 countries and uh, 60 partners that work with our software. So we are also um, a white label PLM platform in a way. Um, <coughs> there are companies that are using our technology to build their own data management information backbone systems. And uh, that is what we basically, we basically aim to do. So obviously we are coming from this, right? Engineering collaboration, mostly mechanical chat. And uh, we are starting to, into, but we change our scope into, into that, right? We, um, we support discrete manufacturing companies and becoming digital in, in any ways. And uh, that includes um, the person to manufacturing, that includes um, the smart product in the field with Internet of Things applications and many things more, and also ALM and MBSE applications <coughs> where we gather and connect systems. <coughs> okay, this is um, some of our customers. I guess you know one or the other in a way. That is also the reason we are doing this wide label business. And um, I will explain uh, <coughs> a little bit how that comes. So. These are all very different applications, not just classical PLM, managed case data, and so on and so on. Um, this is basically what um, our architecture looks like. We have a technology platform that provides core services and um, technology components that enable scalability, and it works kind of a, like a Lego, Lego system. So you have many pieces you can put together to build your system, and we derive um, those products from the platform. <coughs> and to give you an overview, I'm it, the details don't matter in that case, but these are all the pieces we have available as common off the shelf software. We can plug together to build systems to support digital engineering processes or digital processes, digitally supported <laughs> processes in, in the enterprise. And um, yeah, that is uh, what we do with most customers. I mean, just. I, put here this screenshot to give an impression, so there's geometry involved, and then people can look into how things move, and so on and so on. And we also see all these uh, mm. funny bombs Stephen mentioned yesterday, <coughs> which are a big part of what we do, like creating, deriving manufacturing instructions, service bombs from engineering disciplines, and so on and so on, and we have a very complex change process in that disciplines. And the other thing <coughs> we do lately for the last two or three years is, um, connecting stuff that is physically there, running in the field to our backbone system. So this, for example, is live sender data from a machine like this. I don't even know. I think this is 3D printer, just a demo. But that is um, part of the stuff we do. And uh, how many of you know Python as, as a programming language? So I, I spent a few words on it. Um, <coughs> it's interpreted dynamic, e very easy to learn, and uh, many people taught it uh, a scripting language. This is not really true. It's, it's much more than a scripting language. It's, uh, it's a full scale programming language. It's very popular. This is the Taiyogi programming languages index, and uh, Python is on place four, just um, behind the big, the big ones, um, or the big old ones. And by the way, Python is also old, more than 30 years, I think, or 25. And, uh, but Python is vastly successful in, in artificial intelligence, machine learning, data science, automating all things, because it's, yeah, it's very handy and it's literally everywhere. So I guess if you open your laptop and run anything, there is probably some Python, and at least there is some Python on every server you use. And it happens to be the programming language of our contact elements platform. And that is one of the reasons we are that open and programmable and dynamic 
and can do many things. And um, <clears throat> yeah, and we just uh, launched a project. I hope we can finalize it today. After um, we want to do, uh, we want to support OSLC as a uh, connector or interface thing um, to to connect our system with us. And um, we will put part of that. Uh, made part of that open source. We are, we're doing this together with Connective. We are funding the development. It will be an open source project living on GitHub MIT license so everybody can use it. Um, if the, I will go into the use cases on the next slide. We will not be using a code generator like, like many Java based or um, Eclipse libraries working. And we will also probably provide an OSSC client side SDK. And um, that is, yeah, not, not so interesting. There are some components in that, in that API, but um, I will not go into any details. Next year we will have a demo and then we will go into this. That is what we do. This is our product. <coughs> we will um, provide this open source technology to make data mostly available throughout the enterprise. That is all those forms Stephen was speaking about yesterday. Um, 3D, that is we can provide previews, for example, of mechanical of parts of CAD models and uh, make it available to, to a requirements management system by, by linking to it and um, providing a preview to make it visible for someone. Um, we also have requirements in our platform. Um, we are very good in managing variants. And um, as I see it, and Stephen probably also, <laughs> uh, PLM the, has kind of the master global config because we have to link to all the software items from the master bomb it would not make too much sense to do it the other way around. So um, there is some potential and we will focus on change and contact management in our application of OSLC. And um, this is also obviously useful for other people. Uh, like it will be very easy to create a Python-based OSLC provider. Um, you can start with easily scripting something, I don't know, reading data from a CSV file and make it available as an OSLC resource. But um, using Python you can get as production level as you want. And on the other hand, <coughs> this is a screenshot from something called Jupyter Notebooks that is very popular in data science. And, <coughs> and it would be very easy to use um, the open source toolkit to get via using OSLC data into such a notebook to do things engineering related. So, and that's more or less it. Um, leave me your card. And we'll let you know when we have the first bits available on GitHub if you want to play around with it. And just ask me any questions if you want to. I was fast enough. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Uh, maybe we have time for like one more question. Uh, one question, maybe. <laughs> yes, sir. Great to hear about an, another open source project. It's good to support. Like, I think that's what we're missing. Uh, will you go in for core and domain and 3.0 or like where, we will go for core and then we will focus on conflict management and change management as well. Will you do this LDP like 3.0? Will you aim for it? Uh, um, honestly, latest, I latest. don't know. Okay. I, I hope I'm looking at you. So <laughs> <laughs> we still have to discuss yeah, some of you. <laughs> yes. Um, do you have a, a timeline when the, the software will be available? Yeah, we, we hoped to have from the software available by now, but um, we will, I think we will see some code in January, February. Oh, okay. So it will be downloadable then, and then you can start doing things. Mm -hmm. I mean, it will probably grow, I hope. We, if we find contributors, it can grow even faster and bigger. Okay, thank you. I think we should stop here. Uh, thank you again, Frank. Later.